All right, so I'm going to be proving that 0 divided by 0 is equal to 2. So to do this, I'm going to first start with 0 divided by 0. So 0 divided by 0, this is the same thing as 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, because 1 minus 1 is 0, so 0 over 0, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1. Now, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, this is the same thing as... 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10. Again, 10 minus 10 is 0, so I have 0 over 0 again. Now, 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10, this is the same thing as 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. Again, 100 minus 100 is 0, so it's the same thing. Now, I'm actually going to simplify 100 minus 100 over 100 minus 100. So 100 is the same thing as 10 squared, right? So this is the same thing as 10 squared minus 10 squared for our numerator, because 10 squared is 100, so 100 minus 100 is the same thing as 10 squared minus 10 squared. And for my denominator, 10 squared this is the same thing as 10 minus 10. So I'm going to write 10, mi 10 times 10 minus 10 times 10. And this is again equal to zero. This is still zero over zero. And now if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So 10 squared minus 10 squared, this is equal to 10 plus 10 times 10 minus 10. So again, this is completely legal. I'm just using a property of exponents. And for my denominator, I'm actually going to factor out 10. So now I get 10 times 10 minus 10. So now, I can actually go ahead and cancel these two 10 minus 10s out. So now I'll be left with 10 plus 10 over 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. So I have 20 over 10, which is equal to 2. So I just proved that 0 over 0 is equal to 2. Now, obviously, 0 over 0 is not equal to 2. And the mistake in this proof is right here, when I canceled out 10 minus 10 over 10 minus 10. So what is 10 minus 10? 10 minus 10 is 0. So I'm technically canceling out 0 and 0. And remember, 0 over 0 is not equal to 1. So I can't actually cancel these two out because that's essentially saying, implying that 0 over 0 is 1, which it's not. So that's a mistake in this proof. And 0 divided by 0 is not 2. All right, so in this problem, I have 9 to the power of x is equal to 36. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I have log 9 to the power of x is equal to log 36. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 9 to the power of x. I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 9 is equal to log 36. Now, if I divide both sides by log 9, These two cancel out, and I have x is equal to log 36 over log 9. Now, log 36, that's the same thing as log of 9 times 4. So I have that over log of 9. And this is the same thing as, well, if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So log 9 times 4, that's going to equal log 9 plus log 4. And I have this over log 9. So now this is the same thing as log 9 over log 9 plus log 4 over log 9.
log 9 and log 9, these two cancel out. So I have x is equal to 1 plus log 4 over log 9. And log 4 here, that's the same thing as log of 2 squared. For log 9, that's the same thing as log of 3 squared. So now I can move 2 to the front. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 2 times log 2 over 2 times log 3. Now these two 2's cancel out, so now I have x is equal to 1 plus log of 2 over log 3. Now log 2, this is equal to 0 0.301 and log 3, this is equal to 0 0.477. So I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.301 over 0 0.477. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.631, which is equal to 1.631. All right, so in this problem, I have 5 to the power of x plus 5 to the power of x is equal to 7. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by factoring out 5 to the power of x. So now I have 5 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 is equal to 7. Now 1 plus 1, that's 2, so I have 5 to the power of x times 2 is equal to 7. And now I can divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out. And now I have 5 to the power of x is equal to 7 over 2. Now if I take the log on both sides, I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 7 over 2. If I have something to form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent b to the front. So this is equal to b times log a. In this case, log 5 to the power of x, I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 5 is equal to log 7 over 2. Now if I divide both sides by log 5, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log of 7 over 2 over log 5. Now if I have something in the form log a over b, this is equal to log a minus log b. So in this case, log 7 over 2, that's going to equal log 7 minus log 2. And I have this over log 5. Now log 7, this is equal to 0 0.8451. Log 2 is equal to 0 0.3070. And log 5 this is equal to 0 0.6990. So x is equal to 0 0.8451 minus 0 0.3070 over 0 0.6990, which is equal to 0 0.7784. All right, so in this problem, I have 8 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x is equal to 68. So I'm going to first start by rewriting 8 as 2 to the power of 3. So I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x is equal to 68. Now I'm going to rewrite 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x as 2 to the power of x to the power of 3. So I have this plus 2 to the power of x is equal to 68. And I can do this because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. Now from here, I'm going to let 2 to the power of x equal to the variable y. So if I substitute in y for 2 to the power of x, I get y to the power of 3 plus y is equal to 68. Now I can subtract 68 on both sides. So I get y to the power of 3 plus y minus 68 is equal to 0. 
Now, to actually factor this and find the value of y, I need to first find the factors of 68. So the factors of 68 are 1, 2, 4, 34, and 68. So now one wouldn't work because one times 68, we can't subtract those two to get y. And two wouldn't work either. The only one that would work is four because if you divide y minus 4 with y to the power of 3 plus y minus 68, that would be a factor that would be factorable. So now that we know that 4 is a proper factor, for my original equation here, y to the power of 3, I'm going to rewrite this as y to the power of 3 minus 4y squared plus 4y squared minus 16y, which is the which is 4 squared plus 17y, because negative 16y plus 17y is equal to y, and finally minus 68 at the end is equal to zero. Now I'm gonna factor by grouping. So these two are a group, these two are a group, and these two are a group. From y to the power of three minus four y squared, I'm gonna factor out y squared, because that's the greatest common factor. So I get y squared times y minus four, plus from 4y squared minus 16y, I'm gonna factor out 4y, so I get 4y times y minus four, and from 17y minus 68, I'm gonna factor out 17, so I get 17 times y minus four is equal to zero. Now if I factor out y minus four, I get y minus four times y squared plus 4y plus 17 is equal to zero, and now this is, this gives me two equations. I get y minus four is equal to zero, and I get y squared plus four y plus 17 is equal to zero. So for y minus four equals zero, add four on both sides, and I get y equals four. For y squared plus four y plus 17 equals zero, I can factor this by using the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So in this case, a is 1, b is 4, and c is 17. So I get y is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4 times 1 times 17, all over 2a, so 2 times 1. This is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 68 over two, which is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of 50, negative 52 over two. And this is equal to negative four plus or minus the square root of 52 times the square root of negative one over two. And the square root of 52 this can be simplified to, well, 52, that's 20, that's 13 times four, and four is two times two, so this can be two root 13. So I get y is equal to negative four plus or minus two root 13 times the square root of negative one, which is simply equal to i over two. Now, if I divide both terms by two, I get y equals negative four plus or minus the square root of 13i, or sorry, negative two plus or minus the square root of 13i. So now that we know these values of i, y, remember how we let two to the power of x equal to y, meaning I get two to the power of x equals four, and this is obvious, x equals two, so that's one solution of x, and I also get two to the power of x 
is equal to negative 2 plus the square root of 13i and 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 2 minus the square root of 13i. Well, 2 to the power of x, we can't take we can't take the power of a positive number and make it equal a negative number. So there's no solutions for these two, and x equals 2 is my only solution to this problem.